Happy Sunday, all you minties. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an overview of the New Mutants Omnibus Volume 1 from Marvel Comics. Let's do this thing. Now, before we get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us a copy of this omnibus. And this omnibus has been out for a, about a week or so now. And what was interesting is that the direct market cover came out first through Diamond and then this standard edition cover. So this is the standard edition cover. And then over here to your left, this is the Bob McCloud direct market cover and only available through the direct market, whereas the standard edition is both available through the direct market and the book market. But here we are with New Mutants Volume 1. This, if you watch my channel or have been watching my channel for the last year or so, um, every year I'd like to do my top 20 most wanted Marvel omnibus, top 10 uh, most wanted DC books, uh, top 20 most wanted X-Men related omnibus. This, Excalibur, Uncanny X-Men 4, all three of those were in my top five and they are here. It's so surreal to actually be holding this in my hands. Um, it has my favorite image because this book means a lot to me. This is from issue 21, which was my very first New Mutants that I decided to start buying monthly. I finally gave in to the X-Babies. Here is what the spine looks like. And actually, let's do this really quick because the spine has also a variant spine. So thank you to, very much to my buddy Johnny for sending me pictures of what both of the spines look like together. So that's something Marvel has been doing for a little bit is doing a variant spine and a variant cover. Uh, the back of this has a very <sighs> retro feel to it. It's like all these little ink blots here, the, this neon yellow. Kind of reminds me of almost like a yearbook. But here is the entire content of what's collected in these pages. Um, and even here, right? Like, I'm not sure how I feel about that number. Honestly, I, I would prefer the volume one down here at the bottom, but it's got that yellow. I wanted to point out the color there for that. I don't know. It just screams 80s to me. And the cover again by Bill Sienkiewicz. Now, what's cool is that the cover is also under the dust jacket which is something they have been doing. And this is really cool because when Bill Sienkiewicz did covers, he painted the covers. So this is what it looks like before it had the logo attached to it. And the spine looks the same. And then the back is the direct market variant by Bob McCloud from issue number one. So that's really cool. That's something that Marvel has been doing off and on, putting the variants on the backboard. I don't think they do that for if they have, if a Omnibus has three different covers though. Now, the material that we're about to see in here has been collected before in trade paperbacks like the New Mutant Classics or the Demon Bear trade paperback, but lately they've been collected in this format right here, which is one of my favorite formats, and you all know how much I love the Marvel Epic format. As a matter of fact, most of this is found in the first two Epic collections, and I say most because not everything from these two books are collected in here. So, let's take a look in here, okay? So let's start, even the bookend pages are this neon yellow. And then we have the cover here to the demon bear. This is the house that, I think it was, don't call us X-Babies, don't call them X-Babies or something like that. Here are all the credits, the writers, uh, the pencilers, the inkers, and colorists. And we're kicking it off, oh, and the table of contents, of course, where you can find each of the books that are collected in here. I love the mapping of this omnibus already because it kicks it off with Marvel Team Up 100. Uh, this is drawn by Frank Miller. It is written by Chris Claremont, but it introduces us to the character of Sean. And now it's not spelled S-H-A-N, but she's the character that comes from Vietnam. Now, this particular character, I remember meaning a lot to me as a kid because she spoke French. And I thought that was really cool. And I remember um, I had a have a Vietnamese friend who had to tell me, you know, about the history of why some people in Vietnam spoke French and then some people speak Vietnamese. And I thought that was really cool that I've had to ask him because of a comic book. So I think comic books taught us a lot of things, even how to pronounce names like Rain and Sean. Um, and then we kick off with issue 160. That's the second issue found in here of Uncanny X-Men. And this is, of course, this is a little bit of spoilers, where a young Ileana is transformed into a teenage Ileana when she comes back. And Ileana is the character of Magic, who doesn't join the New Mutants at first, 
but will join the new mutants later on i think it's like issue 12 16 and here is where everything really begins and that is new mutants graphic novel the marvel graphic novel line ish, uh, volume number four and introduces us to this new team we have moira mctaggart with her ward rain wolf spain uh, we have roberto da costa right here who will become sunspot we have sam gerthry represent kentucky even though the dude's working in a coal mine but that's okay uh, who will become cannonball and then we have danielle moonstar who will become mirage and then we've already been introduced to the character of sean who professor x with the help of moira is trying to figure out exactly now the reason that professor x assembles this new team of mutants can be found in the pages of uncanny x-men omnibus volume 3 that's why i said it was really cool that they released that before releasing this and that's because professor x thought his entire team of x-men were dead they were up in space lost never to be found again so he had to train a whole new team he had to train these kids to become his future x-men they even have the yellow and blue or yellow and black colors that the original team had and that's pretty much the story of the new mutants i never you know that, that title never really grew on me I, I never liked the title new mutants i get why they did it but i wish they had done something cool like x kids or x babies anyway i thought that was cool back then we also have issue 167 here which is the first meeting of the x-men with the new mutants because the new mutants have been hanging out at their x mansion while they've been up in space they have no idea who these kids are so they come in here this is drawn by the phenomenal paul smith and they start fighting these new characters and of course the new mutants thinking the X-Men are dead or thinking they're fighting doppelgangers or the brood. And there's a twist at the end with Professor X. I will let you find out. Stevie Hunter plays a big role in uh, the new mutants towards the beginning. She's one of those supporting cast members from the pages of Uncanny X-Men that go back and forth between Uncanny and New Mutants. And then literally the first few issues are just about the kids getting to know each other because they don't know like... Everybody looks so different to them. Not only are they mutants, but they all come from different parts of the world. And I thought that was really cool because you have to introduce the reader and the characters to these new characters, new powers that they're not used to, and then other people's powers. And then also they come from different ethnic backgrounds. So that's, damn, that is Chris Claremont way ahead of the game. I love this stuff. Uh, we're introduced to the character of Amara here in this particular story, who will become Magma. And yes, she will end up joining the New Mutants. And this is, okay, cool. This is where they put the Magic miniseries. So this is the Storm and Ileana Magic 4-issue miniseries, which is what happens when she's down there with Belasco in Limbo. How exactly does she grow? We're introduced to other characters like Hellcat. Uh, but... That's not important. The important thing is that she is growing into teenagehood. So, what does this volume collect? Because there are issues of Uncanny X-Men in here too. And like I said, that's important because the character of Kate Pride, Kitty, sometimes goes back and forth. Sometimes she gets kicked off of the X-Men to go and hang out with the New Mutants. So, this particular omnibus collects the Marvel Graphic Novel Volume 4 or Issue 4, which kicks off New Mutants. Uh, it has New Mutants 1 through 34. Annual number one, Marvel Team Up 100 and 149. And now it's only 100, the A story, not the B story. Uh, the Marvel Team Up annual number six, Uncanny X-Men 160, 167, 180, 189, and 192. And the four issue Magic miniseries. Now that may seem like a lot of double dipping to some people, but I think it's really essential to read them together because not everybody gets everything, right? Un unlike some of us that I have to have every X title in omnibus format. But not everybody gets the same things. Not everybody's going to get all the uncanny X-Men. Maybe they're just into New Mutants and vice versa. So had those issues like 180 and 189 and, and 192 during the Secret War stuff had been left out. It's just, it, it, I don't, I think I would have been more upset. Now, uh, it, the beginning artwork is all done by Bob McCloud. It's done by Brent Anderson. And then uh, Steve Le, oh, what was his name? Steve Leohola, Le Leohola. Uh, I can never remember how to pronounce it. Now, in issue 17, we get a brand new cover of the new ongoing artist. I think this is the one with Jester. Yeah. Uh, the, we're introduced to, uh, I forgot, Emma Frost and her Hellions, which is kind of like the Hellfire Club's answer to the New Mutants. And here we have the Bills and Cabbage cover, because I remember uh, when this came out, I was thinking, oh, that's a cool cover. 
but I still didn't get it. It wasn't until issue 21. And then we get Bill Sienkiewicz kicking off the storyline of the Demon Bear Saga with this dark, twisted future with Rachel seeing how Professor X gets killed in her alternate reality. And see, this is what I mean. Like, characters would appear in New Mutants, and then they would appear and have bigger roles in Uncanny X-Men. So, to find out what happens to Rachel, you have to read that one issue in the 180s. But it's so dark and twisted. It was so different. Not that New Mutants was lighthearted to begin with, because there's a lot of things. But then we also had issues like with Team America, the motorcycle club people. To go from that to this was like night and day. The Demon Bear Saga, which is what the movie's based on, loosely based on, is probably one of the greatest, if not to ev to everyone else, the greatest New Mutant storyline. And it's all collected in here, in omnibus format, for the first time. It's wonderful and amazing if you've not read it, but we have to go back to this, because this, issue 21... Is my first issue. This is the big double-sized issue that we've, we we see Warlock appear earlier. Self-friend Warlock, that guy, he appeared earlier in issue 18 with little uh, cameos. But this is where he makes his full appearance. I oh, forgot they used to have a huge fascination with Magnum PI. They thought everybody thought he was such a heartthrob. Times are so different now. And Michael Jackson. The girls had a sleepover during this story arc. Oh, I love this story. This is less adventures with a little bit of a horror twist and then more about getting to know the characters. And that's what this particular issue means to me. And like I said, it was my first issue of buying it monthly. So it, it will forever have a special place in my heart. Now, there are a couple of other characters I didn't talk about, like um, Tom Corsi or the nurse uh, Sharon Friedlander. But I'll leave you to be surprised what happens to them within the stories. But there is another character um, that does join the team besides Magic and Magma, and that is Doug Ramsey, who will end up being called Cypher. He's, his power is that of he can speak any language or read any language. And that's why him and Warlock immediate that wasn't even Warlock, immediately become best friends. And we have actually all of Bill Sienkiewicz's artwork is collected within this run here. So uh, we're introduced to the character of Strong Guy later on in the annual with Lila, the rock star, intergalactic rock star that falls in love with Sam, of all people. But hey, whatever. And oh, this story arc right here with Sean where she comes back and she doesn't look the same that leads directly into, oh, I can't wait to have this in, uh, if there's a volume two of this, that leads directly into the special, um, special issue number one. I think it's New Mutant special number one with artwork by Arthur Adams. And that's all part of the Asgardian Wars. Now, let's look back here for some extras. So, of course, censoring that final page of issue 34 to show you all. This is the Amazing Heroes. Um, so I haven't seen some of this stuff before. Like the original costume designs for Sunspot or Sean. Apparently, they were going to have their own individual type of costumes. Or they were originally going to call Cannonball Holocaust. Pretty interesting. Eventually, we did get a uh, character named Holocaust in what was uh, Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, don't call them X babies anymore. And by Bill Sienkiewicz, this is where he comes in. This is an original. I've, I remember reading about this. This is an original cover that Bill Sienkiewicz. Remember when I said he painted all his covers? That he painted, but it got lost in the mail. And eventually it turned up and they released it later on. And I think it was in a magazine, but here it is collected fully. Here's the hand book guide to the marvel universe the layout pages of that first issue by bob uh bob mcleod oh and the introduction of other characters that's cool and then some artwork here from bill sinkevich original pages and then the painted stuff i'm so glad they kept this on here man i didn't even talk about the fairy tale issue ah that issue is so beautiful well i may go back to that one to show what the binding looks like that that issue is beautifully painted and drawn uh, this are the archives, which introduce us to Legion. It's just reprinting issues, what's is it, 26 through 29. And so we ha do have the first appearance of Legion, David Holler, who is related to somebody in the X-Mansion. He is the son of a character. But I'm pretty sure most of you all know 
and uh, not gonna say a word. This is the Marvel Tale stuff, which reprints the team ups uh, comics with new covers, and then the trade paperbacks. I think these are the classics, yeah. Which new? They have new colors on the classics. I always love that, where they are making fun of her for calling them X babies, and so they don't also accept Kitty the Magic miniseries now let's talk about this binding so this omnibus has 1272 pages and retails for 125 dollars this eye right here um reminds me of actually excalibur the way excalibur's eye looked uh it is printed at the same printer that the omnibus of excalibur was printed at and that is the donley printer so the pages are opening up nice the paper quality is the same that i've seen uh let's look at this right here maybe a little bit of gutter loss there with that o because I have to hold it down, but that's what it looks like without me holding it down. And then, of course, and I've stretched the spine like I normally do. I know I have to remind people of that from time to time, but I did want to showcase this artwork. So I had to come back to this issue because I just think it's completely gorgeous and looks like a Disney fairy tale cartoon, which is that's the way it was intended. But it's the Once Upon a Time story. It kicks off with Nightcrawler, but it's all done through Rain's head, Rain Wolfsbane, this character here. Oh, look at that. I don't know. This is the, this is the one that I was like, okay, I made the right decision. Because this is issue 22. I bought issue 21 and then got this. And I was like, this is so different than X-Men. I'm so glad I made this decision. So that's why I wanted to come back to this particular story right here. With, of course, the beautiful artwork by Bill Sienkiewicz. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this omnibus, please don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was it. That was the content, the page count, the build of this omnibus, and of course, a quick little comparison to where else you can find these stories. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. Comment down below. Let me know if you're picking this up, if you're passing up on it, if you've never read it, and if you have any more questions, because you all know I do answer all your questions. So thank you all so much for watching. We can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. We have different tiers of our Patreon, and there's going to be some changes there too that I will be announcing on the channel soon. Uh, please, everybody, more importantly, don't forget, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.